The future of dentistry is here in 3D. Today's oral health practitioner requires diagnostic tools that are complete and effective. Field DICOM volume was acquired with the Kodak 9500 cone beam CT unit. In the upper right, we can see a 3D volumetric representation of the impacted upper right third molar. It's a vertical impaction and we want to be able to visualize it clearly in all three dimensions. Viewing the upper left panel, we'll just zoom in a little bit and we are able to see the third molar in the axial view. With a slice thickness of 300 microns, we're able to visualize the third molar and how it relates to the maxilla. In the lower left panel, we're able to see the coronal projection and again how that third molar relates to the sinus in the coronal view. And on the lower right, we're able to see it in the sagittal. The sagittal view clearly displays some mucosal thickening as well as some fluid in the sinus. Using the curved slicing tab, we're able to reconstruct a panoramic projection of the An incidental finding is what appears to be a retained root tip in the lower right mandible. And if we move the cut plane, Again, we can see our third molar near the upper side. Visualizing a thin panoramic slice allows us to identify the nerve canal and we can then mark it with an orange animation. Once the nerve canal is marked, we can go to the implant library and choose an appropriate. At this point, we can angle the implant fixture and refine the positioning of it in the axial, panoramic, and cross-sectional. We can now see the implant and make the final corrections in the axial view. We can also see a periapical radiolucency on that molar. We should take note of that. And we'll make our final adjustment to move it to the middle of the bone in the lower right mandible. We make fine adjustments of the implant, making sure we're not in contact with the nerve canal. If we return to the orthogonal slices and volume, we can increase transparency to the volume, and then we can see the marked nerve canal and the implant very clearly making sure that these two structures, the nerve and the proposed implant, don't make any contact. That concludes this presentation featuring the 9500 full field volume. This image was acquired with the Kodak RVG 6100 sensor. It's an image that was taken of an upper first molar that has had endodontic therapy and demonstrates an unresolved lesion at the end of the mesial buccal root. Conventional 2D radiography has limitations when it comes to endodontic therapy, especially in the maxillary posterior region. This image was acquired with the Kodak 9000 3D focused field CT system. It's a volumetric image which allows us to see the region of interest clearly in all. In the upper right, we can see the volumetric representation of the area and the root canal morphology. If we rotate that volume, we can view the occlusal surface of the teeth. We can add a bit more opacity, and then we'll add the cut planes that correspond to the axial, upper left, coronal, lower left, and sagittal, lower right views. In the lower left coronal view, we can clearly see a fistula draining from the apical area into the sinus. If we scroll carefully through the coronal view, we can also see a fistula through the cortical plate of the buccal. Scrolling through the axial slices allows us to visualize the root canal morphology. Clicking with the mouse wheel on each root on the axial view allows us to visualize each root individually, unencumbered by superimpositions. Here we can see the distal buccal root in the lower right. Now we'll be looking at the palatal root in all three dimensions. At this point, we'll go to curved slicing, which gives us a panoramic representation of the area. Now we can view a cross-sectional analysis through each root. On the lower left, we can see our cut plane and our cross-sectional slice. Through both the mesial buccal and the distal buccal root, we can see partially unfilled canals. This particular case was treated successfully for second mesial buccal canal that was overlooked at the original treatment. That concludes our short presentation on the Kodak 9000 and the clinical application of
This volume was acquired with the Kodak 9500 Cone Beam CT unit and is being visualized on Kodak Dental Imaging Software 3D Module version 2.0. The purpose of acquiring the volume was to better understand the relationship of the patient's third molars to the nerve canal. On the upper right, you'll see the volumetric view, and by increasing transparency, we're able to see the roots through the bone of the teeth. The upper left panel is the the lower left panel is the patient's coronal view, and the lower right panel is the sagittal view. All of these views are orthogonal, or at right angles to each other, so it allows us to visualize the intimate relationship of the third molar tooth to the nerve canal in all three dimensions. Here you can see on the lower right, we can clearly demonstrate there is some impingement of the root of the nerve on the nerve canal. Some caution must be made in extracting that tooth if it's treatment planned for extraction. We can see that there's definitely some close proximity on the coronal view and the axial view also. Going to curve slicing allows us to construct a panoramic projection. And what we're doing now is marking the nerve canal on the patient's lower right using a colored animation. We'll go ahead and make the nerve canal animated on the lower left side as well. Again, using a colored animation. Once the nerve canals have been clearly marked, we're better able to understand the relationship when we make a cross-sectional cut. Here, you can see the cross-sectional cut would now be along the long axis of the third molar. In the lower left, as you can see as we make it larger, we can see cross-sectional cuts. The thickness of the cut is 2 millimeters. We'll do the exact same thing on the patient's lower right. We'll move the cut plane across, angle it so it's down the long axis of the third molar, and we'll enlarge those 1 by 3 format of the cut planes. That allows us to scroll slightly and observe that relationship, which in this case is very, very close. At this point, we'll go back to the orthogonal slicing, which allows us to visualize the nerve canal in the three-dimensional volume. As you can see, the nerve canal is also clearly visible in the axial, coronal, and sagittal views. That concludes the short presentation on this particular patient and how three-dimensional imaging really helps to better visualize the patient. This volume was acquired with the Kodak 9000 Cone Beam CT. The region of interest is the patient's mandibular incisor region. In the upper right, you can see the volumetric view. We note a large cystic area. In the upper left, we can see the axial view, the lower left, the coronal view, and in the lower right of the screen, you'll be able to see the sagittal view. Here we can clearly see on both the sagittal and axial views a resorptive defect on the tooth that has encroached upon the root canal system and likely the etiology for this radicular cyst. When we go to the panoramic projection of this region, we can clearly see on the transaxial or cross-sectional views on the lower left and also the axial view on the lower right this defect and how it involves the root canal system. Now we can move the cross-sectional cut back and forward to better understand how this lesion affects the tooth. Now we'll go to our volumetric view of the tooth again. And this is a great view to be able to show and explain the situation to the patient.